welcome back to my channel it's Angoy here and if you're new to my channel I create content around cooking cleaning and organization as you can see today I am in the kitchen so that means we're gonna be doing a lot of cooking it's been a long time since I shared a recipe on here and today I am going to be sharing with you how I make soft layer chapatis and stir fried vegetables these are two of my most requested recipes on Instagram so if you haven't followed me on Instagram make sure you do that's where we interact with my followers and they request recipes which I later film and share here on YouTube all right yeah so follow me on Instagram so you don't miss any updates any you know quick recipes I share there please make sure you follow me there this is the first cooking video in this new house so I'm super excited not much of a difference because the setup is the same it's just like you know it's kind of exciting shooting a recipe from here if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you subscribe you don't want to miss any more content coming soon so you want to make sure you have subscribed you want to make sure your notifications are turned on next to the subscribe button there's a bell tap on the bell to turn on your notifications all right if you enjoyed this video Make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about the recipe. As always, I am going to write down the recipes in the description box. So before you ask any questions regarding the recipes, please check the description box. So I'm going to start with showing you the ingredients. It's super basic, chapati doesn't need a lot of ingredients, but I'm going to show you anyway. And then I'm going to share with you the procedure of making them from start to finish all right this is really simple i love quick and simple recipes so i love simple recipes so this is one of those and if you want to impress your guests or if you want to just enjoy making chapatis and love them and enjoy eating them then you should watch this video to the end all right so without further ado let's get straight into cooking all-purpose flour, sugar to taste, some salt, some cooking oil, 500 ml of hot water, a mixing bowl, and a rolling pin. So I intend to make about 13 to 15 chapatis and so I need 500 ml of hot water. I'm going to cool this down with like 200 ml of water. You should note that if you love soft and uh, if you love fat chapatis, then you're going to need like two 500 ml for about 15 chapatis. But I love mine small and thin. So I'm just going to add 200 ml of water here. So I'll have 700 ml of water to make about 10 to 13 chapatis. So the secret to soft layered chapatis is using hot water. You can use cold water, but hot water helps to activate the gluten in the flour. So you want to make sure your water is hot, but not scalding hot because again you don't want to you know burn your hands when mixing so the first step when i'm mixing the flour in the water i love to use a wooden spoon until it's thick enough for my hands to handle also just to avoid the mess that comes along with mixing the flour and the water so i'm going to go ahead add my sugar and salt mix that nicely and then add some cooking oil then continue to add some flour So the salt and sugar ratio depends on your taste if you love them more salty then you can add more salt if you love them more sugary then you can add more sugar but i love mine balanced so i try to do half sugar half salt yeah so it's always nice to taste the water to see if it's you know in your taste preference so i like to add oil in the water before i mix in the flour this helps to soften as well i believe i was taught this and i have carried it through my <laughs> adulthood so you can add the oil before or after but i love to add mine before and later so i'll go ahead and add the flour in sections you don't want to add all of it at once because you want to give the gluten time to activate as i mentioned earlier so it would be nice to use a wooden spoon if you like use your hands if you prefer that but the ultimate goal is to ensure you mix in everything and you don't have any lumps
So I've gotten to a point that the wooden spoon isn't helping with mixing. So I'm going to transfer my dough onto the counter space or the surface here. It's clean. So I'm just going to add a bit of flour and transfer it here and knead until it's soft. So don't worry about the mess. This is the fun bit about making chapatis. The flour goes everywhere, but then, you know, you have to do it just to make sure the dough is as soft as possible. So you keep adding flour as you go until it's not sticky, but then not too hard to roll. So the good thing about using the counter space to roll out your dough is that it makes it easy for you to, you know, just marry the flour and the water nicely. And each portion of your dough is like perfectly mixed so you don't have any hard parts or any soft parts. So this is what you want to achieve with your dough. It should be super soft but not sticky. So knead as much as you need but make sure it doesn't stick. It can stick a little but you don't want it again to be like too sticky that you can't handle it. So I'm going to form a ball and then put it in a container and cover it with clean film for about 30 minutes. vegetables I'm going to be using half a cabbage, some sugar snaps, three carrots, mixed bell peppers, courgette, white onion and some coriander. Right 
now is for you to stay the night But if you keep saying that you've got to leave Then I'm gonna be alright As long as you tell me that we ain't running out of time Thinking about all the things we did tonight What a time to be alive Just you and I So here are the ingredients for the stir fried vegetables. I'm going to slice the onions and the dania when time comes to cook. Yeah, but there they are. I have our chopped cabbage, our sliced carrots, uh, some courgette, the sugar snaps, mixed bell peppers, onion, and coriander. So guys, it's been about 30-40 minutes and it's now time to uh, work on the dough and now start making the chapatis. I'm happy that all the ingredients for the stir fried vegetables are ready. So once it's time to cook, I'm just going to toss them on the pan. These are really easy to make and I, I don't think they will even take me more than 10 minutes. So first, let's make the chapatis. Please follow through. But as I had mentioned, please check the description box for a detailed recipe of the chapatis and the stir fried vegetables all right so if you want to come back and refer to it you can screenshot it you can write it down you can whatever you way you want to do with the recipe you can do it so you can come back another time and watch the video read the description box and make yourself clear chapatis all right yeah so let's get straight into rolling the dough and now showing you how to actually make the balls to ensure you have soft layered chapatis Let's go! So you want to make sure your counter space is dry because now you're going to be messing around with flour and you know the dough. So dry your countertop as much as you can. So if you want to know if your dough really uh, worked itself through you're gonna get some bubbles as you roll through the dough and yeah that's how you know that you had time to cure and it's well activated that is the gluten is well activated and you can see the bubbles form on the surface of the dough so yeah if you don't achieve that I'm sorry but your dough wasn't well done so this is what I mean as you can see it's forming some bubbles as I roll over the door, and that is what you want to achieve. Dreams in my pocket, couldn't think around my neck like a locket. Call your name in my mind, cause you caught it. So I've rolled my dough into one bowl because I'm not making so many chapatis, but if you're making more than 10, definitely you're gonna have to separate the bowls into two or three parts, but mine is just a few chapatis, so I don't need to really section it into two or three bowls. Yeah. 
so really you don't have to worry about uh, forming a perfect circle so just roll it and try to make it as even as possible on all ends or all around just to make sure the chapatis you have are going to be of an even size so I already have my circle perfect or my dough rolled out so what I'm going to do is add some oil on it about two tablespoons also I'm just going to eyeball this because anyway it doesn't really matter how much you do but uh, try and not overdo it because again if you use too much oil your chapatis are gonna dry once you're frying them because it's gonna seem like you're deep frying them and you know when you use a lot of oil it kind of comes across as deep frying so you just want to use enough just enough to spread through the dough in every corner just to make sure every part is covered you might need to add some more especially if your circle is like really big like mine here so there goes so next up I'm going to cut the dough into small stripes so you're going to see how I'm going to do it so I'm just going to cut them irregularly I don't need to follow any pattern just cut as small as my instincts tell me but yeah you can cut as big as you want as small as you want depending on the size of chapatis you want So don't worry about how irregular these uh, stripes are coming across. I'm going to fix them and I'm going to show you why I'm not even paying attention to how I'm cutting them. I don't want them to be perfect anyway because I'm going to roll them out in a few. So don't worry about this. You just need to have as many stripes as you can get from your dough. So now that I have all my stripes cut, I'm going to pick two at a time and then roll them together and make a bow. Just watch, I'm going to take like for example this and this and I'm going to roll them up together like so, like that. Then I'm going to make a ball from that roll, like that. As I mentioned, it doesn't have to be perfect at all because anyway, it's a chapati, you're going to roll it out. You don't really have to worry about making it as perfect. So there we go. I have my first ball and that's how it looks like. So I'm going to do the same for all the others and see how many chapatis I'll get. I'll try and make them as even as possible but it's not a worry as long as i just have chapatis at the end of the of the day you don't have to worry whether they are gonna be even or not some are gonna be bigger some are gonna be smaller and again we have to make the small chapatis if your mom never made that small chapati the last one that goes on the pan then you didn't leave you did not leave so let me make all the others and i'll come back and show you how now we are going to fry them on the pan So I'm done making the balls and this is what I've come up with. So I have about, these are 14 chapatis. So remember I had told you the water I used was going to make about 10 to 15 chapatis. So today I've managed to get 14. So yeah, so I'm just going to show you how I fry it. It's a really simple once you've prepared your balls like this. Uh, frying them on the pan is very, very simple. But I'm going to show you the process so that you make sure you're going to get soft chapatis 
ones and not hard ones i know it's really tricky you might mess up and just you know do your own things and just get a super hard japati and i get it i have been there but now i will show you what makes them soft and what you can do to make sure they are soft so yeah let me show you just now So as you can see the chapati has cooked a bit on one side and it cooked on dry heat so i'm going to apply some oil on it and it's really soft remember we oiled the dough before we cut it so the chapati isn't dry all the way through so once i apply the oil on that side i'm going to flip it again on this side to now cook the chapati completely then oil this side and turn the chapati once the other side is cooked it's pretty simple but you have to make sure you follow that step otherwise your chapati is going to come out super dry super dry so yeah so i'm going to cook this side i'm not even going to turn it because it was already cooking i just need it to you know soak in some oil and brown a little then flip this other side and cook it so here we go as you can see the chapati has cooked really nicely and evenly and now it's time to cook the other side so once you oil it it cooks really fast you don't even get to wait a minute or so yeah so the cooking process is going to be pretty easy for these chapatis so the preparation process is quite of uh, some work because you have to roll cut then roll again but the cooking process is really fast so while that other side of the chapati cooks, I wanted to show you where I'm going to be placing my chapatis once they are ready. This is one of the pots I got from the set I bought a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched that haul, I'll link it up here. You can go and watch it. So to avoid the chapati from uh, soaking the moisture and getting messy, I know like there's a way it just crumbles and it looks really bad after keeping it for a while. I place a saucer inside or a plate inside the pot. So when you place the chapati on top, it doesn't touch the surface of the pot down here. So yeah, this is a tip I got from my mom. The chapati parties never soak so yeah this is a tip i swear by you can try it and let me know what you think So wipe off the oil from the pan, then place your chapati on top, leave it to cook on dry heat on one side, then turn on the other side, apply some oil, flip back again to cook that first side, apply oil on the top side, and flip again to cook the last side. So I'm going to cook the others and I'll come back and show you the final result as well as the recipe for the stir fry.
all I had for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the recipes. If you want to try them, please do. And tag me on Instagram at wangoi underscore adogo underscore. And let me know what you think about them. Let me see how yours turn out. Let's interact. Let's learn from each other. Yeah, as you've seen, the chapatis are really, really soft. And the vegetable stir fry is just beautiful and colorful. Yeah, so I really enjoyed doing this and I hope you did too. So until next time, bye!